This is your Tech News Briefing for Friday, April 14th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Self-driving cars have been a long-awaited promise of the automotive and tech sectors. And we're still waiting. More self-driving cars are being tested in cities from San Francisco to Pittsburgh. But the technology, according to experts, is far from ready. So what's the holdup? Bart Ziegler wrote about the future of self-driving cars for the WSJ's Journal Reports, and he's with me now to discuss what experts say is stalling its development. Hi, Bart. Thanks for joining me. Hi. Great to talk to you. You know, in San Francisco, you do see a fair number of self-driving cars on the road, but they haven't taken over the streets yet. Can you kind of sum up where this technology stands at the moment? Well, it's still in a very early developmental phase. Those robotic taxis you may see in San Francisco are operated under a very special group of rules. They're very limited and they're closely monitored by the companies behind them. But so far, there's nothing that the ordinary consumer could buy that would be considered a fully self-driving car. We've been in the early stages, though, for a while, it feels like. There's been this promise that the next stage of self-driving is coming soon. So let's talk a little bit about the holdup. You spoke to some experts about this. When did they say fully self-driving cars are coming our way? Well, there seems to be a lot of skepticism at this point whether they ever will come our way. Um, The industry, as you say, has invested tens of billions, if not more, in autonomous driving over the past six, eight, ten years. And there's not too much to show for it. They've run into some obstacles. There are various early levels of what they call driver assist technology, like many cars today have adaptive cruise control, which regulates the car you're driving so it won't get too close to the car in front of it. They have what they call lane keeping assist, which can center your car in the lane you're traveling in. And if you steer out of it, it'll steer you back in. But that's about the extent of it. There are some higher end cars that do allow you on certain highways that have been mapped and sometimes photographed to allow you to use hands-free driving. But these cars typically monitor you to make sure you're ready to take control. If your eyes wander from the road, they will notice that and set off an alarm so you start looking at the road again. So this sort of promised level of fully self-driving autonomous cars where the driver literally could take a nap or watch a movie or sit in the back seat, it's just not there. All right. Well, let's talk about some of the technology that might help us get there then. What needs to change then within the self-driving cars to make them do more than just assist us in driving? Well, today they have the cars that do have a bit of assistance. They rely typically on radar and cameras. And they do a fair amount of telling the car where it is, what the relationship is with the highway and other vehicles. But to be fully self-driving, they need some other systems, typically this one called LiDAR, which is a laser-based system that basically shoots out laser beams you can't see, but they're shooting out from the car every direction and can map an entire representation of where the car is, where other vehicles are, if pedestrians are crossing the street. It creates a map that the car can use to safely drive. The other component behind all that is artificial intelligence, and that's where the experts I spoke to said a fair amount of work still needs to be done. To really capture what the human brain does, AI would need to be vastly more sophisticated than it is today. Typically, today's AI systems rely on a database of driving situations that they've captured and and sort of can work from them to figure out what's happening in real time. But one of the problems is they cannot map every possible scenario of a car and driver. There are what they're called edge cases that the systems haven't mapped, such as you're driving and suddenly a dog runs in front of the car, or suddenly a road worker stands in front of you and puts up a handheld stop sign. These cars rely on past scenarios, may not know how to handle it, and could abruptly jam on the brakes, which could cause a rear-end collision with the car behind it, or they could try to steer around it. So that's one of the main concerns, how you deal with these edge cases. We're seeing AI become more and more sophisticated, though. You know, certainly there's concerns that AI is going to do lots of other roles that humans do at the moment. And driving feels pretty simple. You know, when most of us get behind the wheel, it's pretty intuitive. So why couldn't AI just take that on? Well, it turns out the human brain does an amazing number of things when you're driving and experienced drivers don't even think about it. 
you're making split second decisions. Should I speed up? Should I steer around something? Is it safe to make a left turn at this intersection or not? Your brain has an amazing amount of processing capacity and inputs from your eyes and your ears and your experience that are awfully difficult to mimic with artificial intelligence. The experts I talked to said there is ongoing work in what's called detecting human intent, which would be uh, ways to read human expressions, body language, etc. But it's very early on, and one expert said these techniques are far from foolproof. So that, that is a very important area and one that faces a number of challenges. We talked a little bit about the technology that's needed in the cars. Are there any changes that are needed, say, on our roads or highways to make self-driving more of a reality? The experts I spoke to said that is an important component of future autonomous driving, and it, it's in the very early stages. There's a technology they're working on that would connect a car to, say, traffic lights and weather reports and police accident reports and eventually car-to-car -car communication where one intelligent car could communicate with another and it could help the car you're driving in have a better sense of what the cars around it will be doing. But there are only very early versions of that and one issue is some of them aren't compatible with each other. And the experts told me it could be quite expensive to rewire our highways to have all these signals being sent out by things along the roadside. All right, that's Bart Ziegler who wrote about this for the WSJ's Journal Reports. Thanks for joining us, Bart. You're welcome. And that's it for Tech News Briefing this week. TNB's producer is Julie Chang. We had production assistance from Zoe Colkin. Our supervising producer is Melanie Roy. And our executive producer is Chris Sinsley. I'm your host, Zoe Thomas. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend.